The subject in this video is using the MK168 transistor checker to test uh, two N3055 transistors, a resistor, and an SCR. The main emphasis, though, is going to be the 2N3055. This is a popular TO3 power transistor that's used in a lot of applications. I'm going to be testing three different 2N3055s from three different manufacturers, and we will note the differences in the three transistors. Then you'll get a brief look at checking a resistor and checking an SCR, and then I'll go over to a discussion on the 2N3055 spec sheet um, to consider the readings that we had and were they really within the specs and what you should look out for when you use these devices particularly when it comes to transistor characteristics from differing manufacturers. Now we come to a pile of larger components. One's a MOSFET, four transistors, and a big resistor. Yes, this will measure resistance. You cannot plug those into this. But it does come with a set of jumper leads Put your meter up here, plug the yellow into yellow, green into green, and red into red. The next item we're checking is a 2N3055TO3 NPN power transistor. A lot of you like to use these. They're cheap and available and so forth. Let's find out about the 2N3055 because we're going to test three of them and compare them. Beta 104. It's an NPN. The uh, base emitter forward voltage is 474 milliwatt uh, millivolts excuse me let's try another one and remember that beta remember the beta of 104 will this one have 104 Let's check number two. The first one had a beta of 104. Oops! Beta of 51! And yes, it's definitely a 2N3055. Big difference, isn't it? Let's check the third 2N3055. That's another one here. All three of these were by were used by the way, and I think they're from three different manufacturers. And there's a point to, that I will get to in this. <laughs> so we had 55 and 104. What will this one be? Eighty nine. Not a one of these, not a one of these matched. See how wide your beta range was. Quite a bit different. If you're building a project and you're looking at the spec sheet and it says something like minimum of twenty, oh okay, all this was a minimum of twenty. But if you were sitting here calculating up something like a Oh, I don't know, something that supplies current based on beta transistor calculations. One of them, and say you calculated it on the assumption of 80. The uh, one wouldn't work, one might work, and the third one would work. Get my, uh, get what I'm saying? And if you're doing this if you're designing an audio amplifier, 
and you're using an NPN and a PNP complementary pair, you need, need it where the betas match. This is real good. This is why when I um, do a diagram on a project and everybody's asking, oh, well how, well, how do you know the beta of that transistor? This is how I know the beta of that transistor, and it doesn't say that in the spec sheet. That's the real beta, not the theoretical beta that seems to change depending on who made it and when. A lot of semiconductors, um, particularly transistors, tend to vary do, um, by how old they are in some cases and from manufacturer to manufacturer. All right one more item to test Let's this this also does resistors so I'm going to use the green and the red which represents one and two this is actually says 10 ohms it's seldom cor seldom correct Again, this is a 10 ohm, and they're seldom exactly what they say. Let's see what this really is. 10.3 ohms. That's interesting, because when I measured it on my own meter, it said, it said about 11.8. But I'll take its word for it. Again, this is not... A laboratory grade device they're around 20 22 dollars or so but it can give you a good idea on things such as oh wait a minute got one more item to test yet almost forgot it but it, this will give you an idea how close components are what the actual beta of transistors are really is how close the resistance really is to what it says and so forth this is an SCR it supposedly checks triax too but I don't have a triac to test it uh, let's check the uh, SCR yep the uh, gate cathode voltage is about 0.81 volts it's a thyristor and if you look at the uh, there's your cathode gate anode. Yep, that's correct. We are now looking at the spec sheet for the 2N3055, which is an NPN power transistor, and its complement, the MJ2955, which is a PNP transistor. I have used both fairly often in a number of projects in my videos, and being that we've already gone through a transistor checker, noting the differences in beta and gain, let's discuss the spec sheet and then compare it back to our earlier readings. First of all, the DC current gain in the spec sheet is 20 through 70. Well, two of the devices were over, were over range. One was over 100, one was 80 something as I remember. Let's also look at this, the collector emitter saturation voltage, that is it's fully turned on, is going to be about 1.1 volts. That is, if you're driving a motor and it's a 12 volt motor with this thing, you can expect about one a little over a volt to be dropped across the collector emitter connections. Now these are both rated at 15 amps at 60 volts at 115 watts. My recommendation is I wouldn't run it over 10. When you're starting here running them right to the edge, you're asking for trouble. Let's move down the spec sheet and take a look at some other characteristics. Okay, the collector emitter voltage, you do not exceed 60. And you can have a base emitter voltage of up to 7 volts DC. That's going to drive it pretty hard. It says collector current continuous. 
is 15 amps DC. Well, okay, if you, I would advise you to heat sink it real well. And of course, the base current IB, they say you claim have, you can have a base current of 7 amps. Uh, it's up to you. I would not run it near that. It's in a TO3 case, as you see here. Let's move down and find a few other characteristics. What else do we want to look at? DC gain at um, and this is where the DC gain comes from which is might be why it varies with transistor checkers and varies in real world circuits of course you're having a um, a collector current it's rated at a collector current of 4 amps and a collector emitter voltage of um, 4 volts and they're saying the range is 20 to 70. But you do a different current, you do a different current range. I, my guess is you're going to change the gain. So that's a problem with bipolar transistors. It's these things you need to be aware of. And again, down here, small signal current gain, which might be what we were seeing with the checker is from 15 to 120. So by this small signal current gain, all three transistors fell within the spec sheet. But boy, that's a pretty broad range. If you're, if you're expecting maybe a 2N3055, for example, to have a gain of 50, and you do your calculations on some Let's talk things like spice, and you assume certain things, and then you go out and hook the circuit up. It may not work. In fact, it probably won't work like you planned it worked. And that's why I do not use simulators. I use real parts, because I've spent something like 35 years as a bench technician going through thousands of devices, circuit boards, and parts and the real world can be sort of strange as a final note today's components due to advanced manufacturing techniques are closer in tolerance than older components which could vary all over the place so that it that ends the discussion of the 2N3055 the same thing holds true for the MJ2955, but it's a PNP. And these problems happen in a number of just transistors. So be aware of them. If you're going to do a switch, a straight-on switch, assume that you're assume the minimum of 15 and drive enough current into it, assuming a HFE of 15 and you'll be sure to switch it all the way on. If you're going to sit here and assume it's 120, you may not supply enough current to switch it all the way on. That's that's the trick with transistor switching. Hope this was useful. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.